Taiwanese military officials say they found debris from a weather balloon near the country's outlying islands. The Financial Times says a top Pentagon official has arrived in Taiwan. I'm at Taiwan's legislature building where lawmakers are gearing up to debate a 12.5 billion US dollar spending plan and crack down on human trafficking. Plus, an orchestra that only plays classic Taiwanese songs brings its performance outdoors. A warm welcome to Taiwan Plus News. I'm Leslie Liao. Military officials in Taiwan say they found debris from a Chinese weather balloon near the country's Mazu Islands. It's not clear if the balloon was being used for spying, Bing Wang reports. Another suspected balloon from China. Taiwan's military said on Thursday it found the remains of a balloon on a small island in Taiwan's outlying Mazu Island chain. Military officials believe the balloon belongs to China. It was marked with simplified Chinese characters. Taiwan uses more complex traditional characters. The balloon writing said it was built by the Taiyuan Radio First Factory, located in China's Shanxi province. An initial investigation indicates the balloon was used to detect weather conditions, but Taiwan's military is now inspecting it more closely to see if it was also used to spy on Taiwan. In the meantime, Taiwan is increasing its air patrols to search for more balloons. Earlier this week, the Financial Times reported that dozens of Chinese military balloons have flown into Taiwan's airspace in recent years. Balloons have recently become a major topic in international news. That's because the U.S. shot down a Chinese balloon that traveled over this territory earlier this month. U.S. officials say China was using the balloon for surveillance. The incident has raised concerns about a new kind of security threat. It's also strained the already tense relations between the U.S. and China. Back in Taiwan, officials are keeping a close eye on these flying objects, making sure other countries cannot access sensitive information. Ricky, Jaime Okan, and Bing Wong for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan's Navy is welcoming a new domestically built stealth corvette to its fleet. The Shujiang is the third corvette of its class. Taiwan's military plans to build 11 of these ships as part of a move to have a more mobile defense strategy. The corvettes are equipped with domestically made missile defense systems. They are able to take out enemy ships sailing close to the country's coast. Reports say the Pentagon's top official for China has arrived in Taiwan. The visit comes as tensions between Washington and Beijing remain high. The two superpowers have been exchanging back and forth allegations of spy balloons in the other's airspace. James Chater has more. This is Michael Chase. He's one of the Pentagon's top defense officials responsible for China. And according to the Financial Times, he has arrived in Taiwan. The Financial Times report says Chase will hold talks with Taiwan's military, making him the first top U.S. defense official to visit the country since 2019, and only the second in four decades. Beijing threatens to take Taiwan by military force and condemns interactions between U.S. and Taiwanese defense officials. Taiwan's foreign ministry did not immediately respond to a request for comment on Chase's arrival. But it comes as frustrations over Taiwan between the US and China simmer. On Thursday, China unveiled fresh sanctions on US defense contractors over arms sales to Taipei. Beijing says the move is aimed at defending national sovereignty. Lockheed Martin and Raytheon are now banned from investing in China. Senior managers from the two companies have had work and residence permits in China cancelled. So the way that we see that uh, there, there's the sanctions that you just mentioned is that these are symbol, symbolic and uh, measures and unnecessary. That's how we view them. And look, China can speak to their own actions, but again, we see them as symbolic and unnecessary. 
Over the past week, Washington and Beijing have traded accusations of alleged spy balloons entering the other's airspace. And that's fanned already sour sentiment between the two. But dialogue is exactly what U.S. President Joe Biden is pursuing. He says a conversation with Chinese leader Xi Jinping will come soon, adding that the U.S. is not seeking a new Cold War. This episode underscores the importance of maintaining open lines of communication between our diplomats and our military professionals. Our diplomats will be engaging further, and I will remain in communication with President Xi. The balloon incident has cast a shadow over attempts to stabilize rocky relations between Washington and Beijing. And so Biden signaling that he's willing to talk with Xi is significant. But the visit to Taiwan of a top Pentagon official could complicate matters further and test just how effective efforts to steady US-China ties have been. Alex Chen and James Chater for Taiwan Plus. Former British Prime Minister Liz Truss has called for Taiwan to be given more weapons. She made the comments in Tokyo on Friday at a conference hosted by the Interparliamentary Alliance on China. Truss also urged G7 nations to coordinate quickly in placing sanctions on China if military tensions escalate around Taiwan. The former prime ministers of Australia and Belgium also spoke at the conference. Truss said countries should do more to strengthen ties with Taiwan and to protect the country's sovereignty. It's so important that we all do what we can to support Taiwan because we know that prevention is better than cure. If we build up the defence links now, if we build up the economic links now, we can help protect Taiwan and we can help protect freedom. Taiwan's legislature has begun its first session under the country's new cabinet. Premier Chen Jianren was there to speak to lawmakers. Stash Butler has more. Taiwan's legislature is back in business and with fresh faces here to see things start. The country has ushered in a new cabinet of ministers in the time that lawmakers have been away. And Friday was the first opportunity for the new premier, Chen Jianren, to set out his plans. But things got off to a rough start. Opposition Guomindang lawmakers were making a point to protest the ruling party. So Chen was forced to wait. Here's what he said to reporters. The ruling Democratic Progressive Party says its biggest priority is pushing through a huge 12.5 billion US dollar special budget. Some of that money will go directly to taxpayers. The government took in more tax than expected last year, so it wants to give almost everyone in the country the equivalent of 200 US dollars each. But the main opposition, the Guomindang or KMT, wants to raise that to 330 US dollars. That's just one of several battle lines lawmakers will be fighting along this session. The legislature will also debate amendments that would ban people who commit gang-related offences from running for office. That's after a string of scandals involving politicians with alleged connections to organised crime. The government and the opposition are both keen to show that they take the issue seriously, so expect plenty of squabbling. And there'll be tough action on human trafficking. In the past year, police have rescued dozens of people from smugglers who've forced victims into money laundering and telecom scams. Lawmakers from all parties want to make prison sentences for those crimes much more severe. All of that is just a fraction of what will be happening here over the next three and a half months. And with a general election less than a year away, for some of the lawmakers here, it will be one of their last chances to make a mark on public policy, whether they know it or not. Andy Xue and Stash Butler in Taipei for Taiwan Plus. Politicians from across Taiwan's political spectrum met on Thursday to welcome Xinjiu City to the central Taiwan governance platform. It's a project that's designed to create new opportunities for civil servants in different counties to work together. Sam Robbins has this report. These are not baseball players, but mayors and county magistrates from central Taiwan at an event held in Taichung on Thursday. 
They were meeting to showcase how they were working together as a team, both on the field and off. The atmosphere was light-hearted and celebratory. In a country where political divisions can run deep, it's unusual to see politicians from across political divides being so friendly with each other. But that's the point of this whole exercise. The local government's heads are here to welcome a new member, Sinju County, to the Central Taiwan Governance Platform. The initiative aims to get politicians and civil servants in different areas working together. The platform has set up a series of channels for civil servants in different counties to communicate. Those discussions range from environmental and health policy projects to transport and tourism planning. Officials have started over 100 projects since the platform's launch in 2019. It now includes local governments who serve over a third of Taiwan's population. But being restricted to government bodies and with little input from the public, the initiative is perhaps less about collaboration as the title platform might suggest. Sentiments echoed by Taichung's mayor. Each year, a high-profile forum is held to highlight the platform's many successes. Yesterday's events were filled with pomp and sports, but it's unclear whether this platform will be a home run. Taiwan's bureaucracy isn't always easy to navigate, so while more collaboration between civil servants might make life easier, only time will tell if practice makes perfect. Damon Lin and Sam Robbins for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan's daily COVID-19 press conferences are being cut back to just once per week as the country continues to roll back its pandemic measures. The broadcast used to be primetime viewing. The Central Epidemic Command Center announced the change Thursday. It said details will be provided next week. Taiwan has reported around 15,000 to 20,000 new daily cases in recent days. That's down slightly from the beginning of February. The country reopened its borders in October and has gradually been relaxing restrictions. From Monday, people in Taiwan will no longer have to wear masks in most indoor settings. More relaxed quarantine rules are expected as early as March. A dispute has erupted between the government and Zhanghua locals over a proposed solar power demo site in the central Taiwan county. At a public hearing for the project, people were both for and against the idea. The demo site will cross five villages and cover over 800 acres of land. Some locals and environmental groups are worried that the installation of a solar farm will interfere with local agriculture. Taiwan's Energy Bureau says they have spoken with the local farmers association and say they will not force anyone to give up their private land for the project. But environmental groups aren't convinced. Some are calling for a review of the laws around the land use before construction begins. Many rice farms in Taiwan have struggled with the effects of climate change and water shortages. Some of those farms are now being encouraged to switch from cultivating rice to growing sorghum instead. The government hopes that the measure will save water and cut labor costs. Sally Jensen has more. Barren lands like this one in Miaoli County are becoming a common sight in northwestern Taiwan. This is in part due to water shortages, which is severely impacting rice farming communities. But Miaoli's rice farmers are now being presented with a new opportunity. The government is suggesting that instead, farmers use their lands to produce sorghum, a cereal used to make liquor. In recent years, droughts have become more severe across the country, largely due to climate change. For rice farmers, this is bad news. Cultivating rice uses a lot of water, which parts of Taiwan are currently short of. But farming sorghum uses only 20% of the water that's used for farming rice. And labor costs are also reduced to around 30%. 
The Council of Agriculture is offering subsidies of up to almost 2,500 US dollars per hectare for farmers who make the switch. However, some are still not sold on the idea. Yaoli's rice producers could face irrigation cutoffs in the coming years as the local government rushes to respond to water shortages. Though with the climate crisis turning up the heat, the authorities are hoping to convince farmers that the rewards could be big for those who go with the grain. As Naya Zhou and Sally Jensen for Taiwan Plus. Coming up, locals in Yunlin County await a religious procession with fireworks and ukuleles. Stay tuned for that story. In the face of adversity, the power of truth. Roadmap for a just and open world. Charted by the freest country in Asia. Five, four, three, two. A warm welcome to Taiwan Plus News. I'm Ian Kavat. Taiwanese semiconductor giant TSMC. Public buses to be electric by 2030. A mission that begins with listening. And telling the stories of Taiwan. In Taipei for Taiwan Plus. Drawing insight from original thinkers. And sharing it with the world. Taiwan Plus News, a voice of freedom in Asia. Thank you for watching Taiwan Plus News. For more stories from here in Taiwan, please download the Taiwan Plus app. Welcome back. You're watching Taiwan Plus News. Protests have erupted in the Chinese cities of Wuhan and Dalian. Retired people have taken to the streets to protest cuts to their health benefits. Authorities have cut medical subsidies for retirees from around 38 U.S. dollars a month down to about $12. Police have clashed with protesters, with some older people being pushed to the ground. This is the second wave of protests in China in less than a year. In late November, nationwide protests forced officials to abandon the country's strict zero-COVID policy. The new protests among pensioners put pressure on Beijing ahead of the Communist Party's National People's Congress next month. That's when the administration will bring in a new leadership team. Taiwan's communication, its communications agency says it believes Chinese boats damaged undersea internet cables between Taiwan and its outlying Mazu Islands. The National Communications Commission made the statement Friday. Two of the three cables connecting Taiwan with the island chain were knocked offline by boats in early February. The third cable became unusable due to old age. Mazu residents' access to broadband internet has been severely restricted. Taiwan's Zhonghua Telecom Company says the cables have been damaged more than 20 times in the past five years. It says it's working to fix the problem and that residents have access to free Wi-Fi for now. Taiwan has arrested three members of the Coast Guard suspected of bribery in a seafood smuggling case. Prosecutors allege the three allowed smugglers to leave the port of Jilong for more than 6,000 U.S. dollars per trip. They have also arrested a fish trader. The Coast Guard administration says it's transferred the case to judicial authorities to investigate and prosecute. China has banned the import of many Taiwanese seafood products in recent years. This has presented an opportunity for smugglers to profit. A group of young people in Iraq has established a rescue organization for stray animals, looking after the physical and emotional well-being of those it takes in. Irene Wu has more. 
taking care of stray dogs, cleaning their wounds, and giving them medication. This is the daily routine for protecting animals in Kurdistan, or PAK. The group was established in 2018 with 35 volunteer members. They rely on tips from the public to carry out their work. Most of the cases that we deal with, we get phone calls from people telling us about car accidents, usually dogs. The way we deal with it as a team is that we provide them with painkillers and vitamin K to stop any bleeding that is occurring. Helping the injured dogs heal physically is just one part of PAK's mission. The dog's emotional well-being also matters to the volunteers. Their emotional aspect is very important too. We need to make them feel safe and make them know that they, they are going to be okay. One of the main difficulties that PAK faced in the beginning was a lack of awareness of animal welfare. They launched an online information campaign to help reduce that gap in understanding. PAK has also worked to reduce the number of street dogs through a trap, neuter, return, or TNR program. The group collects strays from different areas and brings them to one location for treatment. Without the care of an owner, stray animals are left to their own devices. When they become sick or injured, but thanks to the dedication of PAK volunteers, these dogs have been given a new leash on life. Andy Xue and Irene Wu for Taiwan Plus. One song is an orchestra that only plays Taiwanese classic songs in the style of Western classical music. The young orchestra aims to localize classical music and meanwhile spread Taiwanese culture. Yu Jinghuang visits the Sound of Spring Music Festival to see its latest efforts. A familiar melody to many karaoke divers in Taiwan. It's the drum beat, an iconic song speaking of the wanderer's bitterness working away from home. One song orchestra plays Taiwanese songs like this one, aiming to bring new life to classics. But it's not the only musical experiment the young orchestra is conducting. These musicians have broken away from a traditional performance space and joined the newly launched Sound of Spring Music Festival. It is currently being previewed and will open to the public in April. The music festival is an outdoor affair. Here in this forest, audience members can enjoy the music while also taking in Sinju's natural beauty. The event takes place in front of traditional Minnan architecture hidden in Sinju's mountains, a city in northern Taiwan primarily known for its tech hub. It's inspired by Britain's Glyndebourne Festival, a world-famous event held outside a country mansion that allows event goers to enjoy music while having a picnic. Musicians say the unique setting creates an entirely different experience for the audience. 人在感受各式各样的艺术表演的时候，跟整个环境都有关系。哦，当你在一个很舒服或很美丽的地方，其实我想心情都会跟着做改变。所以你在这样子的一个心情环境跟条件之下，欣赏音乐的时候，音乐
Jeremy Olivier has this story. Yes, those are firecrackers. 65 meters of small explosives hanging from a huge crane to be precise. They'll be set off to welcome the Bai Sha to Mazu procession, which took off from northwestern Taiwan's Miaoli County on Sunday. The crane's operator says this is far from the first time he's put this together. He's not the only one waiting for the procession to arrive in Yunlin County's Beigang Township. As the group carrying the goddess's statue wins its way to the Beigang Chaotian Temple, it will also be greeted by students from a nearby school playing ukuleles. <laughs> the welcome is sure to be a boost for the more than 100,000 people who've joined this year's procession, an encouragement to follow Mazu again as she leads the way along next year's route. Eason Pan and Jeremy Olivier for Taiwan Plus. Thank you for watching Taiwan Plus News. Remember to download the Taiwan Plus app for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally, we leave you with images of the opening of a video game theme park in Los Angeles. Now, in the words of the great Super Mario, let's-a go. I'm Leslie Liao. Take care and see you next time.